So we're talking this morning about prayer in this part of the service and asking the question, why pray? Probably a good idea for us to think about that and to come up with some reasons, some answers and engage with prayer in a fresh way. Prayer is much more than a shopping list full of requests, no matter how well-intentioned. Prayer is an engagement with God, our creator and redeemer. Rather than being confined by our limited vision and perspectives, prayer enables us to move towards God's big panoramic view of life in the world. We know that, sadly, because of poor because of poor human decision making and downright evil intent the world is not the place it should be and could be we understand the damage caused through the abuse of free will and unrepentant behaviors so we sense the need to pray if we are to have the wisdom to go forward in god's will more than this if a church is to be effective in its ministry to the community it must commit to a strategy of prayer that will prepare the hearts of people to receive and positively respond to the gospel message, as well as impact the spiritual soil of a whole town, thus creating an environment of new and renewed openness. Also, as churches bow to pray with integrity, and express a true heart for God and people, much of our lost credibility will likely be regained. The reasons to pray. And today I've got four major reasons to pray. There are a lot more, but hopefully we'll encapsulate a lot of those reasons to pray under these four headings. Firstly, to develop our faith. It is through talking, sometimes out loud, to God that we continually remind ourselves of God's existence, immense love, close presence, and that God always has our best interests at heart. If we stop praying, we can easily forget about God's place in our lives. Not only that, we start to rely more on ourselves in an unhealthy way, forgetting about God's willingness and capacity to guide us and strengthen us. Then, usually, more things than normal start to go wrong, and we tend to wonder what God has against us, rather than reflecting on how we have left God completely out of things. As we share time with God, we can become more hopeful, even confident, that the broken and lost will come or return to Jesus. We pray for people to know, sorry, we pray for people we know, and we pray for openings of blessing and healing for them. We pray that such people will be able to look at life events a bit differently, with a new perspective, being more open to spiritual solutions. We pray for the removal of obstacles, that the blinds will come up. And in prayer, we start to imagine how this will become a reality and build confidence in how God can bring change. Thus, prayer plays a critical role in preparing our heart for the future. In being totally focused on, on the capacity of God to answer our prayers according to best possible case scenarios. We are released to trust God completely, without fear, and without the need to overreact or overreach, or to take things back into our own hands. We can therefore rebuke the enemy, acknowledging that the one who opposes us has been well and truly defeated. The victory will come in God's time and in God's way, and the faithful will quickly recognise when this happens. Why pray? 
Secondly, to deepen our relationship. It is only as we spend time with someone and talk with them and listen to them that we grow in relationship together. It is the same with our relationship with God. We share all our confessions, joys, concerns, hopes and dreams with a view to knowing God better. Prayer is two-way communication. Prayer is a conversation in which there are no right words, just honest, sincere words. Sometimes only heartfelt groans that the Spirit interprets for us. And where this level of prayer happens in a group setting, there can be a multi-dimensional dynamic that staggers the room with new insight. Sometimes we will hear God's voice through the prayers of another person. Sometimes we will hear God's voice coming out of our own mouth with words never, bef- never before thought of, nor prepared earlier. Sometimes there comes a deep conviction about the presence of God's Spirit, such that everything that is said and heard has deep significance, as if it could just change everything. But to experience this, we have to be listening, truly engaging with God and others. I have come out of prayer meetings exhausted, yet inspired, having tried to hear everything that the Spirit is saying. If we don't listen, we don't hear. Prayer is opening the space for God to speak. Prayer is engaging with what God wants to give us. In honest prayer, we are being formed by God's spirit into the likeness of Jesus. We are learning about God's mercy and developing a servant heart. We are becoming disciples who live authentic lives, representing Jesus in our town, workplaces, schools and places of recreation. We are bringing hope where hope is lacking, and peace to where peace has gone missing, and healing to where lives are broken. We become disciple makers and change agents. It is in the place of prayer that we become positive encouragers, leaving negative and critical spirits behind. In prayer, we start to appreciate our spiritual gifts, and how these might be applied toward the common good. As we deeply engage with God in prayer, we come to weep over the things that God weeps over, just like Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem that had moved moved their focus so far from God. And as we deeply engage with God, we come to celebrate the things that God celebrates. And we know what all those heavenly parties are for. People coming or returning into relationship with Jesus. Why pray? Thirdly, to discover God's plans. It's as we pray concerning the state of things and the opportunities that may be present, while at the same time we consider how deeply God loves the world and longs to be reconciled with all people, that we start to get inklings about how we should proceed. We go to prayer with our eyes, ears and senses attuned to the needs of others around us. The ultimate words here come from Jesus himself. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want, to, we want people to experience the best, and the best surrounds uninhibited relationship with the divine trinity of Father, Son, and Spirit. For God's kingdom to come, means that the perfect future God has in store becomes evident in certain ways 
now. There are spaces and places in which we can experience the best of heaven now. This especially surrounds the quality of our relationships with God, others and the rest of creation. For the sake of our friends, family and neighbours, we want to pray for that kingdom to be seen here. And we want to worship like we mean it. When Jesus came, the kingdom came with him. And as we accept and follow the ways of Jesus, we become part of his kingdom reign. And this renewed reality can become visible to others. Although living in the world still means we suffer from illness, all sorts of trauma and the consequences of sin. As part of Jesus' reign, we are able to cope with and rise above, knowing that God is with us. We can faithfully pray according to God's will, acknowledging that only God knows what is best. We learn to accept God's answers. Yet this best of the kingdom always involves the freedom for us to grow and also to see that any oppression or injustice that impedes life is always alien to God's kingdom and needs to be defeated. So part of discovering God's plans involves knowing what runs contrary to God's plans. Once we have some level of understanding of God's plans, and the problems to be addressed, we should adopt the attitude of being involved in the solution. Where are the open doors? Enable us, our God, to enter new fields of ministry, to embrace different people groups, to take on new adventures. Help us, loving God, to think bigger and broader, way beyond ourselves, to partner in growing the kingdom of God. So it is that prayer aligns the hearts of people with the purposes of God. And the ultimate purpose of God is expressed in the Great Commission, again expressed by Jesus. In short, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising and teaching them. If we love God and sense how people are lost and broken, then this is what we will want to do. And we find our pathways to addressing this in the place of prayer. Part of this will be discerning the often hidden hindrances that gets in people's way, understanding what to do about them, and ultimately turning defeats into victories. Why pray? Number four, to dedicate our efforts. As we minister and work together, completely out of the resources that God has given to each of us for the community good, we recognise that we need God's blessing over all that we do. We are quite powerless in ourselves, but can be hugely effective with God working through us. We pray to ensure that what we do will be clearly seen as the serving ministry of God to others, using us as channels of this blessing. It is the Jesus in us recognising the Jesus in others and providing the spiritual care that only God can bring. We prayerfully share our life stories and testimonies of faith in the hope that God's spirit will touch another individual at their point of need. We live out our life under the glare of the cameras, so to speak, praying that it triggers hope in another person. We want others to recognise how following Jesus works for us. We want to be released in our worship of God, exposing God's presence and reality that despite our weakness and vulnerability, we know someone who makes sense of life, 
gives us peace and a reason to live well. We want to point to the primacy of the God who saves. This all starts with prayer. It is in praying this way, it is, it is in praying this way that, we'll, that we will see untold breakthroughs. We have already seen many such breakthroughs, which, if we analyse them carefully, would have had their origin in someone's prayers or in group prayer somewhere. It's not that God depends on our prayers. It's that God desires us to engage in prayer and partner in the redemptive and transformative outcomes that God wants to bring. If we pray like this, then we will no doubt fill the new worship centre. For there will be untold breakthroughs with the opposition, the blockages and the reservations all stripped away. As God's church is more faithful in prayer, then God's own stunning presence will be more observable and recognisable. And we will see transformation everywhere, in individual lives and across whole communities. And so as we conclude most prayers, by the word that means, so let it be, God's people say, Amen.